Dear students, today let us discuss anthropometry in the fieldwork. Anthropology, the study of man, is a primarily field science. It has three main branches, physical anthropology, social anthropology, and prehistoric archaeology. The primary objective of the physical anthropology is the human origin, evolution, and variation. In anthropology, the theoretical knowledge gained from the classroom is not enough for anthropology. Therefore, to test the theoretical knowledge gained from the classroom, we anthropologists go to the field and collect the data because we anthropologists depend primarily on the first-hand information, not on the secondary data. Moreover, in physical anthropology, the primary objective is origin, evolution and variation to understand how the, there is variation in men, we certain techniques are used. Some are measured, some are chemically tested, some are observed. Today, we are coming to New Canton Village in Ukrul district. It is situated near Yangang Popi. Here, the students of Department of Anthropology, DM College of Science is conducting uh, field work is a part and parcel of the syllabus. Here they are going to conduct field work and they are going to submit a report carrying 100 marks. Anthropometry is not simply the systematized technique for measurement of men, but also a powerful method for description and analysis of the body. Although it has been extensively used for understanding human evolutionary change, human variation, classification of human beings into racial or ethnic groups. Nowadays, it has become indispensable in the study of growth and nutrition and numerous other sciences, namely sports sciences, medical sciences, aerospace engineering, etc. Anthropologists rely on raw data, which can be available only through fieldwork. Consequently, to become a perfect anthropologist, fieldwork is mandatory. Because of this reason, fieldwork is prescribed to students of anthropology who are enrolled in the BSc course under Manipur University, Manipur, India. In partial fulfillment of the prescribed syllabus, Students of the sixth semester are required to conduct field work at a selected site for not less than one week. A report based on the conducted study is to be submitted for assessment by an external examiner. It includes seven anthropometric measurements and two indices of at least 30 males and 30 females. Accordingly, the PG Department of Anthropology TM College of Science Imphal, Manipur selected New Canon Village at Yangangpopi, Manipur as the field site for the BSc 6th semester students 2012.
Sampling is an essential part in anthropological field study. This not only helps the researchers to make use of appropriate sampling techniques but also in acquiring accurate and authentic data. The present field study is conducted among the Tankus of New Canaan village which is located at a distance of about 25 kilometers from Imphal, the capital of Manipur. The village is divided into three parts, namely Ayotang, Alungtang and Awantang. And the present study covers only two parts of the village, Alungtang and Awantang. According to the household census survey of the village conducted by the students, there are 610 individuals of which 310 are male and 300 are female. The village is endogamous with clan exogamy as a rule. As a result, many of the villages are related to some degree. From the census data, it has been found that villages who have attained 18 years but not exceeded 60 years from whom anthropometric data were collected comprise about 50% of the population. Anthropometry deals with the techniques for measuring different parts of the human body. Special attention should be given to the correct position of the subject, proper handling of the instrument, and identification and marking of the landmarks prior to the measurement. An anthropometric survey schedule should be prepared for recording both the data on measurements and some basic information about the subject, namely age, sex, marital status, location, ethnicity, etc. Use of a recorder will not only ensure correct entry of data but also save time. Absolute precision is the goal but it is not always attainable. Certain factors like parallax error, instrumental error or observational error and personal error often creep in. Earnest attempt should be made to eliminate these factors to get the correct value of the measurement. Measurements of the body should be taken with minimum clotting for easy location of the landmarks. In all the measurements, there should be enough light on both the instrument and subject. The fingernails of the manipulator should be trimmed so as to avoid hurting or injuring the subject while being measured. The present model includes seven anthropometric measurements of which two of them namely height and body weight are measured in standing position while the remaining measurements namely sitting height vertex, head length, head breadth, nasal height and nasal bread are measured in sitting position. The measurements should be taken in an orderly manner so as to cover all the measurements quickly. To measure quickly the measurements taken by the same instrument that is spreading caliper in the same position should be completed first followed by the measurements taken by sliding caliper and so on. Then it is followed by measurements in standing position. Now let us come to the measurements. First measurement, maximum head length. The measurement is taken from glavella to opistocranian in the mid-sagittal plane using a spreading caliper with blunt end. Landmarks involve glavella. It is the most prominent point between the eyebrow ridges in the mid sagittal plane above the nasal root. Ophistocranian, the posterior most point on the posterior protuberance of the head in the 
mid societal plane. The landmark is explored during the measurement maximum head length. Procedure for taking this measurement. To take the measurement, the researcher should stand on the left side of the subject. The left tip of the spreading caliper is fixed securely on the landmark clavella by using the left thumb and the index finger. And with the right hand, the other arm of the spreading caliper is placed on the posterior protuberance of the head in the mid societal plane. Then the tip of the instrument on the posterior protuberance is moved along the mid societal plane in up and down motions with slight pressure till the maximum reading is obtained from the scale. The point where the scale indicates maximum value by the right tip of the instrument determines the landmark of histocranian and the value of the measurement is observed and recorded from the scale of the instrument. Maximum head breadth. It is measured from urion to urion with a spreading caliper with blunt end. Landmarks involved. Urion. It is the most laterally projecting point on the parietal side of the head. This point can only be determined by measuring the maximum head breadth. The measurement is taken from the back side of the subject. Standing on the back side of the subject, the tips of the spreading caliper are placed on the most laterally projecting points on the side of the head. Then the tips of the spreading caliper are moved on the side of the head in the same plane in concentric circular or zigzag or forward and backward and up and down movements. Wherever the scale indicates maximum value, it gives the value of the maximum head breadth and the value of the measurement is recorded from the scale. Nasal breadth. It is the straight distance between the two area measured with a sliding caliper. Landmark LRA. It is the lateral most point on the nasal wing and it is determined by measuring the nasal breadth. The measurement is taken from the front side of the subject. To take the measurement, the two tips of the sliding calipers are adjusted to the most laterally placed points on both the nasal wings of the subject. Pressure should not be applied and the two tips should touch the wings slightly. Then the value of the measurement is recorded by observing the scale. Sitting height vertex. It is measured from vertex to the plane where the subject is sitting using an anthropometer. Landmarks. Vertex. It is the highest point on the head in the mid societal plane when the head is held in the eye ear plane. Procedure. To take the measurement, the subject is asked to sit on a stool which can accommodate the entire thigh and buttock. The back of the subject should be fully stretched with the head in the eye ear plane. Hands should raise on the thigh. Back of the knee should touch the stool and the feet should raise on the ground. Then the anthropometer is brought to the back side of the subject close to the body in a vertical position and the crossbar is brought down to touch the vertex and the value of the measurement is recorded by observing the scale. Height or head vertex. It is measured from vertex to the plane where the subject is 
standing using an anthropometer landmark vertex it is the highest point on the head in the mid sagittal plane when the head is held in the eye ear plane procedure for measuring height vertex the subject should stand barefoot on a level floor against a wall the body fully stretched normally with his hips and back touching the wall head is held high with the eyes looking straight at the horizon shoulder should not be raised arms on the side with the palms touching the thigh the heels must touch each other with the feet apart and the knees is close to each other the measurement is taken by placing the instrument in front of the subject in a field situation where a plane surface or the vertical wall is not available the subject is asked to stand on a flat wooden plank or a flat surface keeping the subject in erect posture the measurement is taken from the back side by placing the anthropometer close to the back and heel of the subject then the cross bar is brought down to touch the vertex and the value of the measurement is recorded by observing the scale body weight the measurement takes the weight of the total bulk of the body with a spring type weighing machine procedure to take this measurement the subject should be asked to use minimum clothing without footwear ornaments etc then the portable weighing machine is placed in a fixed position on the ground and the subject is asked to step on it and stand still in normal position then the value of the measurement is recorded from the viewing window of the instrument when collection of data from the field is completed the data are sorted into two groups male and female master charts are prepared for each group and all the data are entered in the master chart through tally marking data of each subject are entered into certain groups and classes and presented in tabular forms with frequencies and percentages following conventional or classical classifications indices in anthropometry an index is the relationship between two anthropometric measurements which is mathematically expressed in other words it is the ratio of two anthropometric measurements in all the cases the measurement having the smaller value is taken as the numerator while the measurement with the larger value is the denominator and multiplied by 100 is prescribed in the syllabus two indices have been calculated in the present study and they are cephalic index is equal to maximum head breadth divided by maximum head length into 100 nasal index nasal index is equal to nasal breadth divided by nasal height into 100 data are then classified into various classes or categories based on the calculated values obtained cephalic index and nasal index of all the subjects of both sexes have been calculated the categorized frequency and percentages following classical classifications are presented in tabular forms 
along with interpretations. Anthropometry is an indispensable part of physical anthropology. A researcher requires thorough understanding of the theoretical background of anthropometry and repeated practice to master the techniques under the guidance of a professional physical anthropologist. The descriptive anthropometric characteristics and techniques for their determination and evaluation should be standardized, that is, agreeing with the international criteria. It is also highly essential to have the ability to develop techniques of anthropometric data collection in a field situation. With this, I conclude my lecture on anthropometry in the fieldwork. Thank you.